How do you know if what you've done is any good? How do you test yourself? Hmm. Comment down below if you have any thoughts on how you test yourself. Hello, my DMs, GMs, storytellers, narrators, creators, and otherwise awesome people. Yes, I'm in a good mood. Of course I'm in a good mood because I am Guy, and this is How To Be A Great GM, and I love your feedback. I really, really do. Comments where it's like, oh, you've helped me so much. You have no idea. I read most of the comments. I really do try and read most of the comments, and when people are like, oh, you've just arrived at the right time, you've done this, you've done that, I cannot tell you how amazing that is. I really cannot tell you how amazing that is. Hit that like button or the subscribe button or the bell button if you want to show your appreciation for this channel and for the effort that we put into trying to make this video as informative and as useful and as productive as absolutely possible because well, it just makes me feel great. And isn't it nice to make someone else feel great and just such a simple little thing? I know in my head it sounded a lot, it's definitely genuine. It's absolutely genuine. The emotion that I go through when I, I read comments of people saying, oh, it's, it, 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 it really encourages me to carry on. It really does. Uh, but you didn't come here to hear that. You came here to talk about role playing and to follow along in the book, The Practical Guide to Becoming an, a Great GM, even though not a good public speaker, The Practical Guide to Becoming a Great GM. Now, that PDF is available, I want to say, on our website now, www.greatgamemaster.com. But I might be mistaken. It might only be out at the end of the month. I don't know with this video. Ah! Uh, so just watch out for it. The PDF will be available hardcover, only available towards the end of October. Once all the printing and stuff has gone through the whole process. And wow, what a thing. Anyway, that's not the point. And that's also why we're not here. And so people will have skipped to this point. So hello and welcome to this video where we are doing the final step. Step number five. Faith. Fifth, um, penta, penta, I don't know. It's the fifth one. And it is the last one. It is the last one in the steps that we have to take to create our own world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Super excited for this because now we test. We test our world. We test it. And if it doesn't pass the test, it fails. Back off you go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> No, I haven't taken anything, seriously. I'm just in a really, really good mood today. And I hope you are too. Right, so in order to be a remain in that good mood, watch this. Why are we talking about the How To Be A Great GM Patreon? Well, quite simply, if we get to our goal on Patreon in terms of our income, we can stop relying on YouTube advertising, which means we could eliminate the ads that play before, during, and after the show. I think that is something that all of us are really after. Now, why would you want to become a Patreon apart from getting rid of those ads? Well, quite simply put, there are different tiers that we have available to you, and each tier comes with a different kind of reward. Now, there are weekly podcasts that come out. If you're on the $3 tier, if you're on the $15 tier, you get 12 NPCs with their full OGAS cards and adventure options and ideas. And if you want to become an honored master, and that is someone who completely supports the channel and whom I make as much time for as possible, you can then join at the $45 tier. Join Patreon. Help us remove those ads, as well as helping us to continue to make great GMing content, which hopefully helps you to become a better GM. I regularly test everything that gets sent to us before we review it. I absolutely do. I insist. You can't actually do anything on this channel if you don't give me a physical copy that I can actually look at and manipulate and go, no, not for us, thank you very much, or yes, absolutely, um, great. So you can guarantee it's GM tested and used most of the time. All right. So, testing. How do you test? How do you test your world? You've kind of got this thing and you go, well, how do I test? So, the test, the test is we look at the very first thing. What did you promise yourself? What was your initial goal? Remember, we were speaking weeks ago about establishing your goal of being a DM and your goal of running the campaign in the first place. You were trying to set up why you wanted to do this. And if it was to make it a comedy thing or if it was to make it a dark and grim and super serious thing or to make it a light and fluffy thing, that was your original goal. Now, look back at that world map that you have created, like the one in the background. Uh, look back at that and go, 
Does it fulfill the promise that I made to myself, the goal that I made to myself? Does it fulfill that? If I made a comedy, if I want to make a comedy, are the names of the towns and the cities, are they comedic? Are the shapes of the continents, are they slightly amusing shaped continents? It doesn't have to be that extreme, but you certainly need to be able to look at it and go, well, this is certainly not some very highfalutin science fantasy thing going on here, where you can see accurate geography, and of course the towns are all named appropriately for the culture and the species and the languages. No, we want to see Puffledorf and Flatulentton and places like that, if it's that kind of comedy. On the other hand, if it's sort of more traditional adventure, we want to see Mount Doom and the Castle of Dread. So, do you have that? Do not panic if you don't. Because you can fix it. You are the master of this world, so you can go and you can fix it. So, do you fulfill your promise? Does your map convey the tone that you were aiming for way back then? It should, because you have been reminded about putting the tone in throughout this entire step process. But now is the time to step back and reflect and go, actually, you know what? Those pretty pink trees don't really fit in a grim, dark environment. So maybe I'm going to make them pretty pink and then infected with plague. So I'm going to add greens and browns and slime and that sort of thing into it. There is nothing wrong with that. So does it fulfill the tone? And then you need to look at it and say, what are my expectations? I look at this map. What do I expect from this map? This is where you need to try and be as objective as possible. You've got to step back and go, okay, if I look at this map, what is it telling me? What is it promising me? Now, if you look at the map that I created, and bear in mind, I created that for the video streams, and um, it, it took me about, I would say, in total four hours to draw that kind of map. It was much bigger than it should have been, but I wanted to, again, demonstrate certain principles of the videos, he said. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely listen to my own advice. Um, I... But I wouldn't say it's a pretty map. It's a very functional map. What does that map give me in terms of expectations? Well, it does give me certain national differences because I can see those differences. From a political perspective, it gives me a lot of politics. There are a lot of uh, areas where there are two or th um, two, where there are three or four nations that join at specific points. So we know those are going to be hot points in terms of either if the nations are at war with each other, heavily contested points, or if the nations are at peace with each other, heavy trade areas. We have got some dark areas that indicate swamps and things, but generally speaking, I would say that that map doesn't offer us a huge amount of expectation other than it's a fantasy world and we've got some interesting locations with some interesting names. So it does promise me fantasy. It doesn't promise me sci-fi or anything along those lines. Can you make the map offer more by adding in more detail? Absolutely you can, and the decision now is for you to take that step and m move your map a step forward and add in more interesting details to build upon those expectations. And then finally, once you have done all of that, you then look and say, well, what adventures immediately pop out at me? And not every location should have an adventure that goes, oh, look at me, I'm an adventure, come on, run on me, but... But there should be opportunities where you go, oh, those mountain ranges that stretch from there to there, they separate this nation from that nation. I can imagine in that mountain range there would be some interesting counter-spying, some scouting going on. Maybe some secret bases have been built by the enemies in the mountains to look into the enemy uh, kingdom. There could be something along those lines. If I look at the lava fields over here, that's a lot of lava and there are cities nearby. So are there geothermal works going on? Is the lava being manipulated? Is it perhaps a city that has um, magma men or lava folk or elementals running around in there? Go back to your original promise or to your tone in terms of how much magic there is. There could be a city of lava men there, in which case there's a whole lot of interesting adventures that could possibly come out of that. What if someone starts to water the streets and cool the lava men and and, or what if the city is starting to sink and it needs to be shored up, but the lava men are refusing to do it, so someone has to negotiate with them. So again, look at your map, look at potential adventures, and if your map doesn't inspire in you a few adventures, at the very least, 
go back and add in some features that you that do. It could be things like caves, dropping in a few little caves into those mountains or some strangely shaped caves in the mountains or making little pock holes in the forests so that suddenly people go, oh, what's in there? That's interesting. Why are there these little pockets, these little glades? Making coastlines that look like reaching hands or actually making stone hands sticking out of the ground. You can let your imagination go wild as long as it is fulfilling the promise, the tone and the expectations and giving you something to work with in terms of adventures. Boom, you are done. Now, if you are really dedicated to this whole map making process, now you can take your functional map and make it beautiful. Now you can translate it into hand-drawn trees and all that kind of beautiful stuff if you really, really insist on doing that. In my experience, a really beautiful map will inspire your players the first time they see it and then not unless you are using that map severely throughout the rest of your campaign. So generally speaking, I love beautiful maps and if you want to make beautiful maps, go for it and knock yourself out. But if you want your players to play in your game, your map is only really useful to you for inspiring it. So it's got to be good for you and nobody else. Don't try and impress your players with your fancy artwork. Yes, I know it's a great temptation, but at the same time, if it works, it works. That's it from me this week. A huge thank you to you for watching all the way through to the end. If you have been following the last five or six videos on creating your own world space, please put it in the comments down below. I made a world space. I did this. I did that. These are my civilizations. Share your creations with us. I mean, that's the whole point of these videos, right? Is to share and to say, well, I made this and I made that and then I got stuck on video three because of this and I got stuck on video four for that or whatever. Just share it with us. I mean, why not? It can't hurt anybody. In actual fact, it makes us all stronger because then you read a comment and you go, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to add that into my world. That's all. <clears throat> oh my God, I'm tearing up. That's the whole point of these videos is that we share and we grow and we learn from each other. Until next week, massive thank you to our sponsors, huge thank you to our patrons who keep the lights on, and to you for watching all the way through until the end. Until next week, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming!